Welcome back. Um, yesterday we had some kind of heated argument, if I might say that, but even though we knew where the uh, pendulum should swing, we were talking about women participation in politics and uh, whether the ground is f free and fair enough for the women to participate in politics and all mm. that. But what better uh, person to uh, talk about this than someone who is already in the field and struggling to carve out a niche for herself and for all the women who might be looking up to her. And of course, uh, like we said yesterday, under international standards, both men and women should have equal rights and opportunities to everything, and most especially to participate fully in all aspects and at all levels of political processes. Uh, globally, women co uh, constitute over half of the world's population and contribute in vital ways to societal development generally. In Nigeria, we see politics as the man's tough. Uh, this is an unspoken slogan. Nobody talks about it, but we all know it. You know, it's like hamatan in the air. Calm you breathe down. it. <laughs> you breathe it. You just know it's there, but you can't touch it. I and this it. has, you know, continued to play over the years as we witness a low participation of women in mainstream politics. And joining us this morning to talk about this is Barrister Juliet E.C. Ikahiri. Please forgive me if I didn't get that pronunciation properly. You would correct me later. She's the ADC House of Representatives candidate uh, for AMAC and Buari Federal Constituency, Abuja. You're welcome, ma'am. Thank you very much. Good morning, once again. All right. Uh, Let's take it up from where we, you know, started last uh, yesterday. Uh, we were going to ask you, how would you describe women participation in politics in Nigeria as of today? Okay. Uh, the honest truth is that uh, over the years, men have always played in the politics in Nigeria. Why do I say that? Um, we have great women and um, blessed memory of women who are champions because even the above women who actually had the agitation in We've had women over the years take their roles as leaders, judgmentalists, lawyers, and all parts of politics. Things like you say, it's about interest, actually, how the norms are going to be in people or again. So, over the years, we have been playing politics. But the problem is, have women been able to teach for an active that put them at a position whereby they can teach in national politics and all politics? So, at the point where they play their role in this. And helping people to be better for the answer is too. And aside is either lack of intentionality, and these are as a result of the clubs that if you make their sometimes a lot of them are the of family, spousal, approval, and so much more. All right. Um, I think we had a little challenge with your, you know, connection again. Uh, we could barely hear you, but let's uh, see how that goes. You've mentioned a couple of things, you know, about women participation in Nigerian politics. But what would you say are the major challenges facing women's uh, ability to participate fully in politics? Oh yes, this a numerous. One of the facts that even when I bring up every time, the lack of transgenerational uh, education from the older generation of the younger generation. You see that a whole lot of 50s, 60s, 40s play politics and aiding people to get to different positions. Just like you say, earlier in the day, we going to emphasize how much women come for those years. For now, Able to identify women candidates and are able to amplify their voices, problems related to female issues and the next year is in the negative. 
So that is a problem. So that is a Okay, we want to apologize for the poor audio. We would call back the barrister. Uh, she will join us, you know, shortly before the end of this session. Nyamgu, from the little things that she has said, what did you pick out? Yeah, I hope it will not be like the day mm. that uh, someone said something and I heard wrongly. <laughs> so if I heard her correctly, mm. she mentioned some of the challenges uh, uh, that women face family and so many other things but she made a very uh, salient point when she said transmission of some kind of knowledge or education from an older generation to the new one there's there's been a gap and mm. the reasoning of the people of the new generation is different from what uh, the older generation <coughs> was reasoning like like how they did politics the women in the in those days did politics it's mm. not the same way the women of today may want to take politics and that's why some of them are getting to the level that they're getting. So I think education in our political space to the people who should be involved in politics generally is not as good as it should be. Mm -hmm. um, all of us have to be deliberate about educating the people. It doesn't matter the sex anyway, the whether man, man or woman. Yeah. We need to be deliberate about how we tell the people their responsibility and their rights when it comes to seeking political positions, whether to be voted for or voting for someone else, mm. we need to do more. In and by the time them. she joins us again, well, one question I would want to ask her is, um, you know, she mentioned about this passing on knowledge, you know, down mm -hmm. to the younger generation. And I'm sorry, I stand to be corrected, but then the women who had played politics before women in my generation right now, mm -hmm. We, we, they are the ones that, you know, the complaints started from. You guys are not doing enough. You're not doing it properly. You know, uh, we want more of you in politics. Do you think the way that they played politics is the same thing we want to come and repeat at this time? Because what I feel like is if we're saying educate the women, because we're talking about women in politics mm -hmm. today, so I, I would like to keep it to that. If we're, if we're saying educate the women and bring them further into you know, the front burner of politics in the country, I don't think the education we need is from the old to the new. I think the education we need is the proper, correct way to play politics. Okay, well, <clears throat> let me not say... Okay, let me just say this. No knowledge is wasted. Mm. Uh, the older generation may not have played politics the way the people nowadays want to play the politics, but they should know what made them not able to reach the apex of political aspirations. Mm -hmm. So whatever knowledge they share with the people who are more daring, who are the people of nowadays, mm. then the people of nowadays will now take that knowledge and <laughs> see what they will avoid. Okay. That's, that's the much I, uh, there is to take from the older generation. It's not as if, okay, we couldn't do this, and then we'll come and tell you that you, uh, you also cannot do it. They will tell us, because of this and that, mm. because of ABC in our time, we couldn't do it. It's left for the new generation to say, okay, this thing in our generation does not exist again, or even if it does exist, this is how much we are daring enough to take the bull by the hand mm. and do what we need to do. But once you start stifling history, putting it, relegating it to the background and all that, no matter how bad it was, I don't think the future you... will be very... Bleak. I don't think you understood what I meant. I'm not saying stifle history or you take it away. You said it is not from the older generation that didn't play the politics that women should have played that we should take advice. It was a question. Do you think that is there are women who have been active, yeah. you know, actively playing politics that are still relevant today in Nigeria? Mm -hmm. uh, those of them, we know them, we know their names. Uh, those are the people that could, that could actually pass the knowledge that we're looking for. My point but those are is the only ones that we know. If the ones that you say are relevant till today are the ones we can take the advice from, mm -hmm. these are the only ones we will look at. They are not the only ones. <laughs> Do you, you don't understand what I'm saying. How do you take advice you, from a person who never participated? Oh, You're there are people who participated, but we didn't know about them. We didn't hear about them because, you know, okay, our guest is back. I'm, I'm sure she's the best person <laughs> to answer these questions. Um, welcome back, Barista. Can you hear us? Very well, loud and clear. 
All right, uh, your audio is proper, uh, way better now. So uh, when you, you know, we had that short uh, interruption, we were bantering among ourselves, Yangul and I, because uh, before you went off, you said something about passing the knowledge from, you know, the older generation to the younger generation. And I was asking a question. If we heard you right, anyway. Yes. <laughs> I was asking a question. These people that we, we, you know, we would want to tag as the people who had played, the women who had played politics in the older generation are the same women whom the entire, you know, society has been complaining about how that they are very complacent with politics, uh, they're not forthcoming, and they're not playing it properly. Do you think that that is the kind of knowledge you want to pass from the older generation to the younger generation? Or do you think it's a different knowledge altogether? Not at all. The, what I mean, the knowledge of the standard they should pass is the knowledge of association. Good association, coming together to because you know, now that the time or by a lot of people do not come, uh, form deliberate associations to pursue the right cause, it's more of like NGOs, but it's still form part of this thing. But you know that there are restrictions against NGOs from participating in politics. So why, what I was trying to say is that it, it could be women in business, women in entrepreneurial, women doing skills and a whole lot, young girls coming together, not just seeing themselves as beautiful people, but as women that are more passionate about mission building. Now, this older generation, that was the only point I'm speaking, they should have passed on how to relate to fellow women so that they can be able to see themselves more as sisters than as competition. Now, what the older generation could have been doing wrong is the fact that they have misused the opportunity given to them to actually shape the society, whereby they go together in their numbers to collect uh, gift items from these politicians instead of standing up to demand for what is actually necessary. Get women among themselves who have played good roles in society, amplify their voices. The major challenges women have is that, and I see it most of the time, they say women are too loud. You even hear your fellow woman telling you, you shouldn't be loud. You shouldn't be very vocal. You shouldn't be expressive. So what then do the women want? What kind of politics do they want women to play? Is it the politics of silence? When people are going out to talk about manifesting and their intention about ambition, I don't know if they forget that many young girls in universities and secondary come out best to their class. So should they keep this vision to themselves instead of serving in a position whereby they can be able to propagate this vision in craft, in tech, in business skills, and this also plays its role in governance. Even in governance, governance is their business. When contractors come to try bamboozle it with a whole lot, you bring your skills of mathematics and finance in building, in contracts and all you bring your, 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 your knowledge in, in engineering. And these are the women we want to see who actually help to amplify the voices of not just young women, but themselves. The portrait intelligence I've said as a politician is the fact that I need more heroes to women organizations. Because if these women come out to their numbers to see how much effort we are putting into play, and among other women doing it in various states, women will win elections. Why don't we ask the right question? Give women a place in media. And if you work in if you work in a media station, help the other woman to get a seat there. You see men doing this thing, reaching out or sending cities to high profile politicians to come for programs. Why don't women do this? Is it a crime to actually help a fellow woman? How many voices will be heard if all women come together to be able to vote, not just vote as a woman? I tell people, let's stop thinking the word, I'm a woman, I'm a woman. Focus on the competency of that female candidate and do not at any time place her over a man. 
Make it seem as if you are giving the both genders equal opportunities. And when you see the woman is doing absolutely well, amplify her voice. It doesn't take anything. And these are the challenges we face. Aside money, money yet dead. But there are so many strategies women will be able to able to sail through in politics without always focusing on the money. Imagine if in a group they have said one thousand women who have one thousand children whose youth also have one thousand friends and it's propagated like that. So these are the issues that we need to actually be deliberate about. So the challenges are one, the amplification of women's voices by women. Men are already doing a lot for themselves. You even see them in various parties giving the other party handshake. It does not mean they are publicly doing anti party but they are giving room for sportsmanship in politics. And these are the things I, I tell people. I admire women like Natasha Akosu. I admire women who are deliberate and they know what they are doing politics. The fact I'm running in agency does not mean I will not give credit for another woman who is doing excellently well. And we have police If you see they are going wrong, you tackle them in a constructive manner, but don't tear down. Don't call another woman a because she's doing politics. Amplify those areas you feel that you know she will be able to excel and commit to nation building. When we are intentional about that, to we'll have a society of women that are more in governance for the right way. Okay, let Thank me you. let me be, before we get to how you climbed to where you are right now. A lot of people have said the political climate in itself is not very favorable to the women. Apart from the fact that you're talking that about the fact that women may not be supporting women the way they should, which I agree. But what are some of the things within the political space that you think need to be urgently changed to make the playing field more uh, conducive and more level for the women to participate in politics. Oh yes, it's all right there because of own experience. Two days ago, I was able to sit in a ride as not a woman who gets reached out to a man who out. But before now, and for the lack, the lack of the lack. In the executive and such a woman issue, I left the female gender. I was asking the why is the executive giving so much credit over the uh, uh, legislature on the fact that these people are going to be elected seats. And before you speak, you know, we now and it's like, oh, that's a yes. This is what fully participating. We have to have to give us a deliberate. What are some of those things that you feel should be changed now to make the playing field more conducive and level for the participation of women? You started answering it, but we didn't get the audio quite well. So you might want to start from the beginning again. Oh, oh yes. So I was talking about the issue of the same treatment given to the executive by giving them a left finger ground to supply their voices on the media. It also be giving to the legislative system. Yes. I, I'm, and this I'm also saying this not just because I am a woman, but give them the both all candidates the level playing ground to be able to debate on a national platform. Since it's also national offices. So if it's for the state level, we do the same for the House of Assemblies uh, candidates and also the executives that run for governor and governor and also for the national and the federal. I mean, also the federal, you do the same as you uh, try to make it the same for for the executives. You also do the same for the legislative. So that's one because if truly Nigeria wants to fight separation of power, they should understand that giving the executive so much power makes the legislative incompetent and tied to the apron of the executive. Then also, uh, another level of uh, things out that she's doing is that media out platform should also deliberately reach out to women, not just men. 
So while as in as much as we're trying to downplay the issue of known party system, women who are trying to get their uh, their voices in minimal parties should also be given an equal opportunity as their male counterparts in those bigger platforms because we already know most big political platforms got it wrong by giving only the male gender chicken. Like in FPC, for example, we are running for the House of Red. The APC and PDC have male candidates. So, cutting it across, you can also give them that same platform as big parties, as some other small parties, because you should not let, you should not uh, judge the candidates based on their party, but by their individual competence and skills that they are bringing to the table. So, that's one. So, some of the things that you need to also do. And then also, uh, I think it's not the media, just the media, because we cannot actually talk about organizations because they are not allowed to play politics, but they can also need help to also not just reach out to top political uh, with, um, women who are in top political parties, but also women in other political parties to actually create a level playing ground for all women to be given an equal opportunity to show their skills to it. And then uh, another thing, uh, I think that is just it because with the right media, women's voices will be heard because election is all about publicity. Once you are in people's faces, I'm sure they will not be able to forget you if you are actually in your society. Uh, but you, I, I don't know how this would sound, but um, uh, most of the things you have talked about are not really. Um, directly concerned with uh, the polit political space as it is. Uh, this is what I mean. A media house, for instance, will, will interview the people that have been thrown up by the political parties. Mm -hmm. If I find that in APC, for instance, there are all male candidates and I want to interview them, I'll interview the male candidate. I won't interview the female candidate who is not there. And in your state, I can sh I'm, I'm sure you might just be the only woman who is running for House of Reps. And so if we're talking to you right now, for instance, you're one in, uh, among a thousand people who we are likely to talk with. But we've seen deliberate steps by some parties, um, maybe reducing the, num uh, the amount of money for buying of forms, some of them actually giving out the forms for free to women, women contestants, uh, so to speak, and then doing some other things to encourage the women. But the women themselves may not be as forthcoming as they should come up. So are there other things yeah. that we do not know that we need yeah, to right. voice? Because we, we can only voice what we, we've we've had a complaint about. So mm. what are these things yeah. that we need to amplify? It's a two-way thing. As I said, I was very fortunate to reach out to by, contacted by Arise on Sunday. And in fact, upon the candidates in my constituents who are running for the House of Red I'm the only one who has given such not even given such opportunity. I am for it. I've been very deliberate about my political journey. Look out on my social media platform. You will see the high rate of capacity across all genders because it is something we are strategic about our move. And for me, what I've dealt with what I'm doing, I think, in, like I started with, in the, uh, I said, we need to be more intentional. Although I know that there are so many clubs in the state, family, distractions, a lot of things. And people look at it like, and say, ah, Julia, why are you so out there, so exceptional? Is it country to you? And I tell them, no. When you keep on with the right mindset, hmm. it's just like how you read books in school. Don't give up. Because you know all those things, even in. So I think, I think this already something to really down home to our young women. When I ran for cancer, I remember going up of the street to give flyers and talk. I was seen as a fool. My fellow genders saw me as a stupid person because I was on air, I was on nails. It was something that was ridiculous. And I was like, come on, this, this thing affects us. Even your makeup, your wig, your bangles, everything. 
whatever in the market, your health being your health is God. Why are you thinking that quality does not, does not affect general way of life? So people oriented people are okay. I feel that price will give opportunity to sensitize these people. So just like people who go to school and come out and they don't get so they get courage. So we it's very thing. So it will give the younger woman more intention. We give her more hope to say that oh look at how she was strategic. She was not about the people. She was not about the organization of life. She was more about what she going to do. She was more of better. She was more deliberate. She was she, she knew what to say. So these are the things that come up for able to make women hurt. So that it not be that that you on the matter of the old. It will be that you deserve so these are the things we need to be exercise our people going forward. And that not be discouraged because I want to read so hard female gender. I thought that it could be a whole background, all breathing, what your parents how much the parents teach their kids about patriotism and service? How much they are teach about hard work? How much do they teach their kids about self force so they don't mm -hmm. end up big for this exchange of political offices of these are the issues. Really right. work on it going forward as a thank you. All right. Uh, it's been very enlightening, actually, you know, speaking with you, Barrister Juliet. And we want to say thank you very much for coming by on the run up this morning. We appreciate every minute you spent with us. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And we wish you good luck uh, in your endeavors. Thank you. I appreciate it. She said one thing that got to me. She said she was deliberate. She yeah. said, in her words, I asked for it mm -hmm. and she, you know she, she deliberately put herself out there I, I know someone who is contesting but she would not find one of his flyers on his social media platforms and this is a big person actually already very popular people mm -hmm. know him uh, uh, I don't know why he's doing that. It's not my business, not my problem. But, you know, the fact that she's deliberate about putting herself out there, because it stemmed off of the question that you asked, you know, about how that even the little effort that has been made to give women the chance, yes, the opportunity, a lot of people are not forthcoming. Uh, they are not picking up on the opportunity that is being put out there for them. And that is where I hold my gender, because... <laughs> I mean, it's all of us inside. If they, unfortunately, a lot of times when women are being spoken about, they generalize about everybody. Mm -hmm. And if we are in that race together, then we need to start holding ourselves accountable. Uh, there are lots and lots of women out there who have actually held leadership positions, might not be political, mm -hmm. and they did it, or they are doing it very well right now. And leadership we is leadership. Names. What? Whatever, okay, whatever level that you know i'm just you yeah. know talking right mm -hmm. now whatever level it is that you are operating from and you are in a leadership position and you're doing it very well your people need you if as a woman i'm talking as a woman right now your people need you and there is let's call it what it is there are lots of opportunities for women in politics in this generation in, yeah. in the nigeria of today why are we not picking up on it? It's actually annoying. As I used to feel like screaming. <laughs> well, that's what I've always been saying. Um, but sometimes when you are of my gender and you're talking and giving, passing the ball to the women, it will sound like, okay, you are supporting the men, you're against the women and all that. But I think women should decide to be what they want to be. Mm. Because when you go into an exam hall, for instance, YAC, there is no seat for women, no seat for men. And they have been excelling. They don't give them 35% affirmation, action, affirmative mm. action. True. Uh, they don't give them slots for free and all that. But they, they show their worth in whatever they're doing. So women should stand up. But also, we need to talk to the women <laughs> that when your gender is doing something please support them support on the credit of that person mm -hmm. not, not just because she's a woman anyway that you bring anybody who doesn't fit the bill yeah but if you see that the person has the capacity why not because a lot of people leave their gender because yes 
whether you like it or not, more men have more money than, mm -hmm. than the women and they run after the money. But have you thought about the well-being of your children? At least women think about that. A lot. And, and, and I, I the feel like... The of the future of your children. The truth about it, or this is my truth and what I feel, is that we, uh, women, more women see politics as leadership and not as business. Do you get me? More men see it as business, money-making venture. It is more women that actually understand what it takes to be organizational, what it takes to be, you know, putting things together and arranging things and making them look good. It is more women that have that skill, which is what is required God of gave leadership. Them that. Exactly. So, so please. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> You're going to the village meeting now. I'm going to talk to, to the women. But, but it's true. It's whatever we do, the future is ours. And if anybody is concerned about the future, it's more, women are more concerned about the future because they have kids in it. Mm -hmm. Men, yes, they want to provide, they want to do everything, they want to measure up and stand shoulder to shoulder with mm -hmm. their peers. But women are meticulous. But you see, like I always say, if politics is a race that, de that, de um, that requires a fight and you mm -hmm. want to go into it, go in with your all and then fight the fight. And then some of us, like she almost accused us, the media, <laughs> We're, we're open mm -hmm. to letting people know what you are about. But if it means that to go to the media, it means giving the media house a, a million naira. Mm -hmm. If we collect from the men and <coughs> ask you to pay, don't say because you are a woman, we should, uh, we uh, should give uh, you do it for free. free. I'm not saying that's what we do, because we didn't do that, at least for this mm -hmm. one. So, but do... Have a different mindset. Play your own part. Yeah, play your part. Don't say, <laughs> I cannot get it. Is it man's thing or yeah. anything? If you're ready to enter, go all out. We, we know women in the society that are better than the men in that same society. We know them. But to get them to come and do what they need to do is a problem. I've had experience of trying to get women on my show in various media houses I've worked. And they decline. And they need this show to showcase what they are about, mm -hmm. not for money or I anything. I think that's also where the orientation that she was talking about, you know, comes to play. Because a lot of times, tra tradition and society, especially in the African climb, mm -hmm. has, you know, made it that women are not supposed to be vocal. Women are not supposed to be outspoken. Women are not supposed to be seen. So a lot of times when, you know, you... you open up a program, for example, and you say, women, oh, they say this, 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 and that, that, that about us. Or there is this trend on Twitter, women are complaining about a certain thing. Let's talk about it. It is men that will call. But, but you know, yes. But So, I'm, I'm sorry to cut you short. You know what, where I'm going with that is, because, uh, you know, it, 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 women have been shut down a lot of times. Please try and understand what I'm trying to say here. So it's not easy. In fact, they, a lot of them don't even understand how that they need to speak up, how that they need to speak out. So that is where the orientation comes. We need to start changing that mindset. We need to start changing that orientation of, am I on your mind? Or you don't know that you're a woman, you should keep quiet. You don't know that you're a woman, why are you so loud? I'm a woman. I have mouth and voice. I should speak. But you see, another thing is, my question is, is it this same African continent that shut down the women mm. that had Queen Amina, who was a woman who could fight? And now we will say in the North, women do not have a voice, but Queen Amina came from the North. How much of her, her voice was quieted down? We had this, the movie that the, uh, Netflix is just showing right now. The Woman King. The Woman King. All time it's like every. a... A historical <laughs> thing. It's not like... But just, how many of them good. were like that? But if you go to the same society that produced a woman king then, yeah, you will see... <laughs> let me finish. You will see women who have resigned to faith. Mm. My point is, no matter how we think that the Africans want women to be silent, there are women who have still stood out and done what they are supposed to so do. So we should hold on to those yes, ones and see them and see that if they, should, they could survive in this society, I too can. Mm. So yes, Africans want the women <laughs> to be silent, but people who survived it are 
are testimonies that you too can do it. So don't go with the mindset. And there's only so much we can do in the media. Actually. We can talk to you like we're talking. We may not be able to go to every village and say it. We're hoping that our television station gets to every village. And that's the much we can do. We can't carry the advocacy like National Orientation Agency should do, which they are not doing. We can't carry it like the political parties themselves could do. Because in a village that someone could, could contest for councillorship as a woman, you will have to hear the news that in their headquarters there is a form free of charge for women. Mm. Some of them don't get to hear this. They don't know. Uh, so parties should do it. The government, which has an, an agency, National Orientation Agency, should do it. Mm -hmm. Civil societies should do it. Even the women's societies themselves that, mm -hmm. that talk about women all the time, forming NGOs here and there, should do these things and show working. We could continue having this conversation and it would never end, trust me. <laughs> So moving on, on the run-up, we promised you to bring you newspaper headlines, and that is where we're heading to uh, right now. We're starting off with uh, this very trending uh, topic uh, headline, actually, because we've seen it in different, in different other newspapers. Uh, but we're starting with this day newspaper, and here this one says, uh, between politics, obese investments, and Saludo's tirade. Hmm. It, it, this conversation doesn't seem to want to end anytime soon. <laughs> Why would it end? It will not end. Uh, but um, from this, from what uh, Soludo said, mm. a lot of people that I've heard have described this uh, with a saying that he who the gods want to punish, the first make him mad. Mm. I don't know who has been made mad right now. Or it's you that said it. Let's just continue. <laughs> I don't know. But, but you know, some, some utterances from some certain kinds of people mm. should never arise, mm. no matter what, um, what divide you are. True. It should never arise. Unveiling Atiku's manifesto before editors and the business communities. Mm. That's also from this day newspaper. And still on this day newspaper, this one says, Obi to Nigerians, I will be in charge of Nigeria. Hold me responsible. Ah, <laughs> my young people on the streets will say he's saying it with his full chest. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, um, well, personally, I like Obi and what he stands for, but we've heard that before. Mm. I, I know people in government now that have survived with their heads that asked the people, the citizens of Nigeria, to stone them mm. <laughs> if they do not perform. <laughs> So far, no stone has been <laughs> aimed at them. Not be who you see, you go stone. <laughs> <laughs> They're still among us. They're still among us, buying Hennessy for people, buying, buying drinks for people mm. and all that, settling the boys with packs and all that. But we haven't seen anybody, because maybe because there is no avenue, like town hall meetings that mm. will really have town people. Mm. Because if you say town hall meeting in Lagos here, it's the same elite that will attend the town hall meeting, and then you'll be given questions to ask. Let them go to the villages and say, <laughs> and say we're having a town hall meeting. And quickly, uh, let's move on because we're running short of time. Uh, this one says, Adebanjo, it's Igbo's right to produce next president. Hmm. That's a headline you might want to check out. Yeah, Igbo's right. Uh, or or more, more clearly put, the Southeast right. Adebanjo has always said that it is the turn of the southeast. North has had it, uh, southwest, south, south, and all that is the turn of the southeast if it has to come to the south, because mm. northeast may not have had it. And if it comes to the south, southeast should have it. And they have chosen a candidate and they gave reasons, why, or he gave reasons. Only that, I do not know if Afeni Ferrer will survive 2023 as a body. <laughs> Because now, because now you have like five factions. Yes, we've had the ones that endorsed um, Obi, the other one endorsed Tinubu, the other one endorsed Kwanko. So, so most uh, recently. So whoever can come, can come and get endorsement from Afeni Ferry. I mm. hope Afeni Ferry realizes that they are larger than life, as it were, because mm. they're the only surviving, uh, call it political party, from the days of old. Because uh, Pa Debanjo said, they came up as a political party, but they survived. They were able to survive because they maintained the name, a socio-cultural group of oh. the Yoruba people. And they, the things that they stand for, 
remained it the same. It remained the same from their war era till now. All right, moving on to the next newspaper, which happens to be the Vanguard. It says, ASU threatens to speak sessions missed during the strike over no work, no pace. You, you <laughs> always said this funny. on the show, you remember? Oh, you my goodness. So what if they say, well, no problem, federal government, don't pay for work not done. Mm. You can't hold them accountable for the and then who most. suffers i yeah. am more concerned about the students because they're the people that suffer the most imagine if asu actually goes ahead to do this yes that is eight months of work loss and if you ask me they will be justified okay we didn't work let's go on no problem draw the line pay us where we start to work oh, goodness. and the one behind is lost please there are things that we need to like they say use our heads and do what we need to do this must never arise again. Affliction must never <laughs> arise a second time. Second time. <laughs> Fixing economy, poverty reduction, key to solving Nigeria's insecurity problem. That's from Obi. And uh, this one says, I'll wipe out uh, Boko Haram and revive businesses. Atiku promises Gombe voters. World Bank to inject $700 million for adolescent girls' education in 19 states is another headline. And this one says, uh, you should apologize to Nigerians, not campaign. PDP tells Tinubu, really. Let's move on quickly to the Daily Post. Um, it said, hold uh, 1,000... Okay, 2023. 2023, rather. Hold a rally in Kanu. Ganduji challenges Kwankoso. Hmm. <laughs> and moving on to Daily Trust, it says, as Buhari kicks off all drilling in the north, Abauchi Gombe residents demand jobs and clean environment. I agree. Okay, Nigerians will be poor in, 250 million Nigerians will be poor in future unless something happens. That's from the UNFPA. Uh, they warned Nigeria. And uh, I think this is where we draw the curtain, uh, you know, for this before the news. episode. <laughs> before the news, before yes. The news. No, we're not running. We're coming back. <laughs> before the news. After the news, we'll be back with yet another guest that we might not just want to let out of the bag right now. Stay with us.